Today, we're gonna to experiment with making a new shower system for the Tundra using a stainless steel pump sprayer. Coming up. Hey, my name's Drew and this is Evergreen Overland. On this channel, we hone our outdoor cooking skills, we showcase 4x4 vehicle modifications, and we do reviews on camping and overland gear, as well as taking on projects and learning new skills through just trying to do things yourself. Well, we've got a trip coming up in the next couple of weeks. We're just gonna be going down the coast on a little road trip primarily. We'll be staying in some campsites and probably some dispersed campsites. And one thing I've been thinking about for a while now is some sort of shower system for the Tundra. In my old 87 truck, I had a water system, mostly for doing dishes. Um, but this system, I kinda wanna be a little bit multifaceted to be able to you know, not only have a hot shower at a place after a couple of days or whatever if you wanted to, but also act as a way to shower off dirty gear or even rinse dishes and that kind of stuff. Now there's a ton of different ways that you see overlanders build shower systems. You can run heat exchangers through your heater core so that the truck's engine actually heats up the water as it recirculates through a pump. Uh, you can do just a solar shower hanging from a tree. You can do the whole wet wipes thing. There's road showers that are like PVC tubes that you can mount to your vehicle, painted black. You can pressurize them with a compressor and being that they're black, they just absorb a lot of the heat from the sun and that heats your water. There's no shortage of different options out there. I've been looking for something that's gonna be fairly modular and that I can choose to bring with me or choose to leave home if I want to on shorter trips or what, what have you. There's a company that made these or at least used to make these style showers called Zodi Extreme. And they sold, it's like a three gallon stainless steel tank pump sprayer that you pressurize with a handle and uh, you know, ready to go. And then it comes with kind of a little hokey, uh, you know, green propane tank burner that you can set it on to heat it up. It's a, it was a really cool system, but when I finally went to go pull the trigger and buy one, I found that nobody has them in stock. And it seems like the company has kind of gone dark, if not gone out of business. Searching around online and Facebook, looking for the Zodi Extreme, I came across a post from somebody. She had the Zodi Extreme, really loved it. I picked her brain on it a while back, and then I saw an updated post that said that the Zodi Extreme was having some rusting issues and some pitting issues and starting to develop leaks, and that she switched over to the system I'm gonna build today. So really quick, let me show you the components I'm gonna use to build this thing. I don't think it's gonna take me very long, and then we can test it out. Okay, first off, you have the kind of heart and soul of this system, and it is called the Smith Performance Sprayer. The model number is the S103EX. Just so you know, if you like this video and you want to see more like it, hit the subscribe button to be notified of new videos I put out. Um, also down in the description, I'm going to link all of this stuff so you can just click on it and buy it over on Amazon. But uh, right in the top, your user manual. Ah, you have your uh, spraying wand, which I'm not gonna use this. This will just go somewhere stored in the uh, chaos that is my garage. Sweet. Yeah, that looks pretty damn stout, honestly. And then the last thing in the box is the actual uh, hose that it comes with. And the hose would screw onto that side and uh, you'd hold, screw that onto here and you'd you know, have a nice pump sprayer. But since we're modifying that, we're gonna take this off actually. Next I have just like a pretty generic uh, sink faucet sprayer that I got online. It's kind of a universal kit on Amazon. Um, I bought it because it can either do constant on in like a shower mode or you can turn the nozzle and it'll do constant on in like more of a jet. Here's the actual tube and we're gonna actually keep this to get uh, a longer tube. So we're gonna connect this tube to this tube so that you kind of have a longer uh, hose section that can be thrown up and over like a, you know, pop-up shower. And then the shower head itself or the vegetable sprayer is this little guy. The only other couple of things you're really gonna need for this is a quarter inch by quarter inch ball valve. I just got this ball valve as kind of a redundancy to keep the pressure off of this component as much as possible when I'm not using it. Obviously, I'm gonna depressurize it. This little thing here is actually a depressurization unit, kind of like you'd see on a compressor. I got a quarter inch by quarter inch connector piece to go in between the ball valve and the first section of hose. And then you're just gonna need some plumber's tape. I'm gonna get started 
Uh, I already loosened this a little bit. I'm gonna take this off. First things first, your pump sprayer actually already comes with some plumber's tape lined on that fitting right there. And I'm gonna get this screwed on just like so. Just gonna align that so it kinda tucks away close to that. That's gonna be its off position. That'll be its on position. So off, it'll kinda get protected so it's not getting bumped with it. It comes loose from wherever I figure out I'm going to mount it in the back of the truck. From there, I'm gonna go with the section of hose that it came with. And this also came pre-done with uh, the plumber's tape, but I'm gonna put a little bit more on there. Always struggle to remember which direction plumber's tape goes on. And then I second guess myself up until I start actually putting it on there. And then sometimes I've done it the wrong way and I need to redo it. A couple of loops of plumber's tape and I'm gonna feed this on there. The connection for these, these are basically two uh, quarter inch by quarter inch inside diameter threads, but they're both female. So you gotta have a connector with two males in the middle there. I'm just gonna get this side, feed it in there. Now, same thing on the other side, wrap it two or three times around with some plumber's tape. And then the hose side. And then the last piece of this whole thing is the nozzle. Loosen it up a little bit. Pour your water in. Turn it righty tighty to lock that gasket down. And then basically we're gonna pressure test it right here. Pump it a couple of times. Definitely building pressure. I'm gonna turn the ball valve on, check for leaks here. Yeah. That works. Not too shabby. All right, it's a new day. I've got my shower pump sprayer built last night. Tested it to make sure there were no leaks in it, which there aren't. Now I'm gonna go through the process of filling this thing up with water and seeing how long it takes the water to get hot. Also testing if I'm gonna be able to directly heat it with the stove uh, attached to the swing out. So I'll show you guys that next. Water temperature right now is just about, I'd say probably 68 to 70 degrees. I'm gonna say that's pretty much on average what you'd see in a summer day, you know, ground lake water or something like that. So I'm gonna fire this bad boy up, see how long it takes to get roughly three gallons up to 100 degrees. And that would be kind of shower water and all that kind of stuff. So let's do it. All right, there you have it. That is 100 degrees. I'm not sure how long it took because I didn't start a separate timer, so I was just timing it based on the camera. I'll put it up on the screen right here. I like my showers just a little bit warmer than that, so I'm gonna let it go for a few more minutes. All right, I'm calling it there. About 115 degrees, I think. Somewhere right around there. Took this much time, really awesomely. It should pressurize much faster with it being full. I mean, this thing's got some serious distance. <laughs> it's like 20 feet. Definitely less with the jet mode. <laughs> but I'm going to be using that all the time anyway. Hmm, that's freaking perfect. All right, so there you have it. Perfect way to get nice and clean off those long days on the trail. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel, mashing that like button to let me know I've done a good job. If you have any questions or comments on how I made this system, as well as uh, want to follow me over on Instagram or at evergreenoverland.com, feel free to do that as well. As always, thanks for watching the video and have yourself a good day. I could use some privacy.